So get ready to put your math skills to work to solve this interesting little math word problem. Matter of fact, let me go ahead and read the problem. It is as follows. Lou invested $10,000, part at 5% and the rest at 6%. And what we're talking about here is simple interest, no compounding. His total annual income from these investments was $575. How much did he invest at each rate? Okay, so this is the question. Feel free to use a calculator. But if you can figure this out, we'll go ahead and put your answer into the comment section. Then, of course, we'll walk through exactly how to solve this problem step by step. But uh, before we get started, let me quickly introduce myself. My name is John, and I have been teaching middle and high school math for decades. And if you need help learning math, well, check out my math help program at tcmathacademy.com. You can find a link to that in the description below. And if this video helps you out, or if you just enjoy this content, make sure to like and subscribe, as that definitely helps me out. Let's take one more quick look at the question. So Lou is investing $10,000, and he's going to put part in a 5% investment and the rest in a 6% investment. Now, his total annual income from... Uh, these investments is $575. That's how much he made on uh, the combined total of the return on his investment, if you will, ROI. Now, the question is, how much did he put in? How much did he invest at each rate? Now, some of you might be saying, hey, Mr. E2 Math Man, uh, you know, he should have just put all the money in the higher investment, 6%. Why would he, you know, split uh, between 5 and 6%? Yes, that's a good question, but people do a lot of different things when it comes to investing. Okay, so first things first. First, we have a lovely math word problem. Always use the rule of three when you're encountering uh, any problem. Now, I've already read the problem a few times, but let's suppose this is the first time you are you know, looking at uh, this particular problem. You just don't want to read it one time and then start doing stuff. You want to give your brain a little bit of time to kind of absorb the information and strategize and say, okay, what should I do? Now, in this particular problem, we need to focus in on the question. And the question is, how much did he invest at each rate? i.e. how much money did he put into the 5% investment and the 6% investment. So he's going to take this $10,000 and he's going to split it up. Some of this money is going to go to the 5% and some of this money is going to go to the 6%. But we do know that he made a total of $575. So we have all the information that we need to solve this problem. But what we want to do is model the unknown. What is the question? The question is, how much did he invest at each rate? Well, when you have questions like, hey, how much did he invest? Or how much is this? Or how much is that? Uh, this is a perfect situation to use algebra because we can uh, let a variable represent the unknown value. All right, so let's go ahead and take a look at how I did that. And uh, you could have done something similar. So I'm going to let X equal the amount he invested, Lou invested at 5%. Now, X could also represent the amount he invested at 6%. It really uh, doesn't make that much of a difference. Uh, you'll get the same solution. But I'm going to let X equal the amount he invested at 5%. Now, if he invested X dollars, remember he has a total of $10,000. If he puts X dollars into the 5% investment, well, how much money is he going to put into the 6% 6 uh, 6 investment? Well, he's going to have to put, uh, so you're going to have to subtract away this amount he put into the 5% from 10,000. So 10,000 minus X is what he put into the 6%. All right, so we have two uh, uh, variables or variable expressions that represent the amount he invested into, um, you know, these vehicles, whether they be, you know, well, they're not going to be stocks, more or less. They could be <laughs> savings accounts. Who knows? But let's go ahead and uh, take the next step here, which is to figure out how can we kind of link together all the information in the prompt to solve for X. See, uh, the main idea when, you, when you're using algebra to solve a word problem is once you've established some variables and variable expressions, you need to start thinking to yourself, all right, how can I solve for this variable? Well, the only way you can solve for this variable is to construct an equation. So you need to start thinking of, of you know, how this information is relating to one another in such a way where you can form an equation. 
So let's go ahead and take a look at this. Now, this is just kind of a little bit of a, um, a summary of what's in the problem, okay? So we have 5% invested at one particular amount, okay? Plus 6% that's invested, uh, well, we have a particular amount that we're going to invest at 6%. We have another amount that we're going to invest at 5%. I think that's a better way of saying it. But the total, okay, if we take 5% of this amount invested at 5% plus the amount he invested at 6%, if we can figure this out, we do know that the grand total is $575, meaning that's how much he earned on these investments, okay? So if you can figure out what 5% of this amount is and 6% of this amount is, well, that's 575. Well, we just kind of established some nice, lovely variables that represent the amounts invested at 5% and 6%. So let's go ahead and actually use those. All right, so 5%, how much did he invest at 5%? What was the amount? X, right? We said X was the amount he invested at 5%. And then uh, we uh, said that 10,000 minus X was the amount he invested at 6%. Okay. And that's going to equal to 575. All right. So we're almost there. Okay. Hopefully you can uh, see how we can form an actual algebra equation with this setup. Okay, and this is the kind of logic that you need to use. Now, you don't have to do all of this. Uh, some of you could, uh, you know, I looked at the prompt and said, oh, I know exactly what to do. And that's fine. But make sure you, you know, at least make it clear your initial setup and what it represents. Okay, so this is kind of uh, the logic here. And look right here, we have this lovely equation symbol, uh, this equal sign. So we have an equation. All right, so let's put this all together. So this is going to look like this. Okay, so 5% of this amount, okay, or the amount invested at 5%, uh, plus 6% uh, times the amount invested at 6%, which of course is 10,000 minus X, is going to equal to 575. All right, so how do we find a percent of a number? Well, 5% of any number, you're going to change this percent to a decimal. So the way we do that is divide by 100 or move the decimal point over two places to the left. So 5% is going to be equal to 0 0.05. So we're going to uh, take 0 0.05, not 5%, 0 0.05, and multiply it by X, right? So that's uh, basically 5% of this amount. So 0 0.05 uh, times X plus 6%, which is going to be 0 0.06 times the amount invested at uh, 6%, which is 10,000 minus X. So this right here, these two things uh, represent the amount that we're going to make and uh, from these uh, respective investments. But we do know that the grand total is going to be $575. Okay, so hopefully this makes sense. And if you're saying, yes, indeed, Mr. YouTube Math Man, I get this. Well, then the next step is to see if you can actually solve this equation. We have uh, 0.05x plus 0 .0, uh, 0 0.06 uh, times 10,000 minus x is equal to 575. All right, so again, uh, feel free to use your calculator. You should never do a problem like this without a calculator. Even if you know how to work with decimals by hand, that's fantastic. But, uh, you know, calculators are there to help you. Now, before we continue on, if you want to get better at math, you definitely can. But the key is to find a teacher that gives you clear and understandable instruction. So hopefully you like my teaching style, and if you do, if you're like, yes, I think I can learn from you, well, then you will love my full main math courses. So uh, you can find the links to all of these courses in the description, but they include basic math, pre-algebra, algebra one, geometry, algebra two, pre-calculus, and a ton of specialized test prep math courses. Okay, so again, don't give up if you're having a tough time in math. I can definitely help you out. So you can check out the links to all these courses in the description. So let's get back to the video. So we have 0.05x plus 0 0.06 times 10,000 minus uh, x is equal to 575. All right, so first things first. First, we need to use the distributive property right here. So we're going to take this 0 0.06 times 10,000. That gives us 600. And then 0 0.06 times this uh, x is going to be 0 0.06x. Okay, so we have 0.05x plus 600 minus 0.06x. So the next thing we need to do is combine like terms. We have x here, x here. So we're going to add these coefficients. So 0.06, or sorry, 0.05 uh, 
minus 0 0.06 gives us what? Well, let me go ahead and show you this. Obviously, I did the work. Okay, so again, we're going to combine like terms. Don't forget about this negative sign. You can kind of think of this as plus negative 0 0.06, but these two together is going to give us a negative 0 0.01. So we have 600 minus uh, 0 0.01x or 600 plus negative uh, 0 0.01x is equal to 575. All right, so we have all of our uh, variable terms on the left-hand side. we got to get this number over to the other side. So we're going to subtract 600 from both sides of the equation. And when we do that, we get uh, negative 0.01x on the left, and then 575 minus 600 gives us negative 25. All right, so to solve for x, all we have to do is divide both sides of the equation by negative 0.01. So we have a negative divided by negative, which of course is a positive. So negative 25 divided by negative 0 0.01. Again, use your calculator. Uh, we get 2,500. So X is equal to 2,500. And uh, some of you might be like, yes, we're done. Here it is. I'm going to turn in my paper. Wait, wait, we have not yet answered the question. So what was X? Well, we have to go back to the beginning of the problem. Remember X, uh, we said we're going to let X equal the amount Lou invested at 5%. Okay, so Lou invested $2,500, or the value of X, what X was equal to, at 5%. And if he had $10,000, right, and he invested $2,500 at 5%, well, it's 10,000 minus 2,500, which is X, is how much he invested at uh, 6%, which, of course, again, is 7,500. All right, so hopefully this was pretty easy for those of you that have been practicing your algebra and word problems. Now, uh, if you want to get better in algebra, particularly word problems, uh, how do you do that? Well, uh, it's kind of a two-phase process. So, uh, well, two-step process. So step one is you got to get the skills, okay? You got to learn how to solve equations. You have to learn how to interpret or translate a verbal phrase into an algebraic phrase. You got to get these skills down. But once you have these skills down, if you master them really well, the second phase is to start practicing solving word problems, okay? In other words, how do you set up models? How do you set up equations? How do you interpret, you know, uh, you know particular models? And by the way, in algebra, there's a lot of different type of uh, similar problems, okay? Like rate, motion problems, uh, money problems, uh, uh, mixture problems. There's this kind of classic type of uh, problems. And if you master the master those, you're going to basically be able to handle 80 to 90 percent of the type of problems that you may see on tests and exams. But uh, you're not going to get better at this stuff unless you practice. So if you truly want to improve in math, you have to practice these skills. And how much practice? Well, as much, <laughs> the more the better, let's just say. All right, so hopefully this little video helps you out. And if that's the case, don't forget to like and subscribe. And with that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your math adventures. Thank you for your time and have a great day.